So um, this is the October meeting of the Open Active W3C uh, community group. Um, this is the first meeting we've had of the community group uh, for a while. We took a pause over summer while we thought about uh, what we wanted the W3C community to be and what we wanted it to focus on. And over summer, it's become increasingly apparent that one of the priorities uh, around the Open Active Data Specifications needs to be on the fit between the Open Active Specifications and the specifications that underpin Open Referral UK. So what we've decided to do is for the next three months or so to really try and focus on those, the, 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 the fit, the relationship between those two sets of specifications. And the plan broadly is that today we're going to do the context setting. We're going to talk about uh, in, what open referral is, so people in the open active community have a, a reasonable level of understanding of that, and people can catch up on that in the video. Uh, I'm going to talk about some work that London Sport have been doing looking at open active and open referral, which I think is really interesting uh, and hopefully inspiring. Um, and then what we will do based on that is have a bit of a discussion and try and define some problem statements. It might be that we actually do that offline uh, between the meetings uh, through, through the the collaborative working channels because uh, we haven't got a lot of people here um and then what we will do is come back to those problem statements um at the next meeting uh, and we'll start to define requirements and patterns that could help solve those problem statements um we've also got an item of aob today um so howard would like to have a brief chat about club finder functionality um uh, so yeah, that's that's the the meeting today. So I, I think what I'd like to do is start by handing over to Mike Thacker, who is the lead for Open Referral UK. And I've asked Mike to give a 10, 15 minute introduction to Open Referral. So that we've kind of got that, that base level of knowledge. So Mike, you should be able to share your screen. Um, can I hand over to you? Is that all right? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, it's I think you need to stop sharing and then I can, Andrew. There we go. Um, pick the right screen they're always numbered differently on different sharing apps there we go and you should see a mini slideshow and if I can find the chat window I'll also paste in a link to those google slides should you ever look wish to look at them um, I am very conscious here that we have experts in open active uh, and in what I'm in provides so um, more so than me so feel free to correct during or afterwards if um, you think I, I say anything incorrect I'm probably less technical than many people on this call um, but I've been asked to give a, an introduction to open referral uh, and uh, work on open active so far so let's let's have a bash um the we describe uh open referral uk as a standard for the interchange of querying information on public services data um that particularly applies to the uk bit whereby the international bit is often just concerned with the structure of data and maybe taking a whole database from one instance and dumping it into another whereas we're very much concerned with interfaces uh, and apis i think the same is probably true of open active um andrew mentioned in in his agenda hsds um and hsds is the human services data specification a very uh, unfriendly title for what i just routinely call uh, open referral standard um, and it talks about the structure of the data so there is is an auto-generated or part of an auto-generated relational entity relation diagram for the structure and that link to the documentation shows that and shows a set of tables which historically have complied with the open knowledge foundation's tabular data format to reflect the database albeit in the latest version open data services have represented the standard as a set of JSON objects and dependent on where you start you can generate different structures but um, essentially they can be used to generate an ERD and they can be used to generate the structure of responses to API uh, web methods 
So on the right, we've got HSDA, the Human Services Data API, Application Programming Interface. Um, and I have a picture there of uh, a Swagger page, um, Swagger, which is used to represent the structure of RESTful APIs, and that's in accordance with the UK government's requirement to use um, Open API is it as, as a data standard, and there's a link there to, to Swagger pages, which shows, as you see, a small set of web methods with a few parameters for each. And we look to um, a, an instance of Open Referral UK as being compliant if it implements those web methods and its responses match the structure that is dictated by HSD. DS. So we provide, you know, samples of what it should look like. And I'll come on to say, you know, we provide a validator which, which checks, checks against that. Um, in open referral, this is typically the diagram that's used for non-technical people that don't examine the entity relation diagram. We have a service uh, or multiple services that can belong to an organization. And for each service, we have contacts, we have locations, eligibility, accessibility, um, taxonomies, costs, languages spoken, a few other things. And importantly, in the context of open active schedule, and I will come on to that because open active is, is somewhat more detailed with respect to schedule than open referral. Um, when I'm talking about how the API is used, so, you know, bear in mind that little bit of in the orange ellipses is, is, is what I call, consider the standard, is the API, the interface standard. And the two main ways in which um, we promote its use is one from a centralized database, maybe centralized within a local authority of all the services which might be relevant to um, people finding services themselves or then being referred to services by a linked worker or a social prescriber. Um, that data can be presented in many different interfaces and it could be social prescribing software or it could be multiple web pages which filter the data according to their audiences with a UI designed according to their audiences and believe it or not, just getting the concept of splitting the back end database from the front end UI is a, is a major um, achievement in, in large parts of local government. But obviously, once you've done that, the standard lends itself towards that. And we do have some good sample local authorities that present the same data in multiple different ways, including in one or more directories and in content that is embedded within the body of their web pages about other things, courtesy of taking API feeds. The other use is in taking data from multiple sources and bringing it together, much as IMIN does for um, open active data. Um, and the use case for that is neighboring local authorities um, with interest in one another's services, just taking it once, or maybe taking service data from people at Age UK centrally or Ofsted potentially and reading it into a central directory. And we have a use case which um, the Department for Education is looking at taking services which support families from all local authorities um, and they would like um, to take that as an open referral UK stream rather than requiring rekeying by local authorities so they do the aggregation centrally and although nothing is official yet we're also looking at them once they've aggregated that as providing that stream out so you know they, that would be one source of a large amount of of services data coming from local authorities in a single Open Referral UK API compliant stream. Um, where we've got to so far, I mean, we've been through a whole series of government projects from Open Discovery, which looked at the case, including the business case for the standard, LGA projects implementing it with iStand UK, um, local government, local digital funded projects going through alphas and betas. And after a very arduous process, getting it adopted by the cabinet office in the UK by, by their data standards authority, which officially means it's mandated for central government departments where appropriate, but still optional for local authorities. In practice, that isn't policed, but it, it, it helps 
give people confidence in the standard. Um, just a quick word, given that this is a relatively technical audience on um, on the concept of profiles, which we've introduced in version three. The the prior version of Open Referral UK was looked at part of open referral what we kind of considered a profile on the international open referral and excluded things which weren't relevant like federal tax status which is a, a, a us thing but it added things we thought we needed the two communities have got together now and we have one international working working group that gets on well and has picked up a lot of lessons from the uk so we now have an extended hsds which includes the bits which have proved successful in the UK and excluded the bits which internationally we don't think we need. So it's a it's a wider HSSDS than before, albeit only a small part is mandatory. And then we have profiles, which to a large extent are, are filters on these for fields which are particularly relevant to scenarios like um, the UK HSDS or something called called core tables, which is a cut down HSDS. The profiling um, technology that's introduced by open data services does let you extend it in that it lets you make fields which are optional in the extended one mandatory in a particular scenario. It also lets you, although we haven't done this yet, mandate particular taxonomies or indeed add fields. Uh, and our intention is to look at anything that's added to see if it merits adding it to the core you know the fundamental hsds in due course but we have that concept of, of profiling to filter down the standard or, or or firm it up in bits for a particular use case um and the uk um department for education might be one such case uh, they've looked at what's currently in hsds and they're in, in in open referral uk and they're pretty happy that it meets their needs um quick comparison and this forgive me this is extremely simplistic and i'm nervous about doing this in an audience that knows open active backwards but my understanding and i think the understanding of dcms that ultimately has has funded work on both sides and i know open active through through sport england is that they and we see open referral, the green one, as being a broad standard for all human services, um, whether they be physical activities or they are things like um, recycling, um, environmental services, cycle clubs, choirs, you name it, things which probably go beyond the scope of open active. Um, so we can view open active content as as a subset of that hence it's a smaller square but that is not supposed to imply that it's it's a less sophisticated standard and indeed open active does go into more detail with respect to um specific um uh, specific you know physical activity data um we have in hsds a schedule which might say now, this group meets every Saturday morning, um, but it doesn't say next Saturday morning it's led by this person and this is where you book. And my understanding is that our schedule, and I get my SS as muddled up, but my schedule corresponds with Open Active's session series, but Open Active also has a schedule session which has a record for every thing so next Saturday morning the schedule is led by Jean and you know this is where you book and you also have a booking API so in the latest version of open uh of, of HSDS part of open referral we've added to the schedule just a simple hyperlink which says if you want details of the schedule go here and that is where we would expect outside of open uh, referral somebody to specifically detail the individual schedule sessions and if necessary link to a booking system such as that provided by the open active booking api so that that's most of what i wanted to say um but
but importantly, I did want to say that we are pretty prescriptive. Sorry, I need to go back a slide. How do I do that? Um, 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 we are pretty prescriptive as to um, what the API should look like. Whereas my understanding of Open Active is that it's quite flexible. Firstly, you have this RPDE, which means, you know, to guarantee 100% of data, you need to go back to day one and read all the records and all the incremental changes, which is a lovely approach, albeit it provides a bit of an overhead for people who are not, who haven't got the infrastructure to deal with that. Um, and you, you don't have specific API calls which would give guaranteed results in the same structure. And my understanding is that's where, where I'm in came in because they take such a feed and they tidy up data where the standard has been interpreted differently by different providers and they allow people to make queries on that API for specific subsets of service like you know physical activity in a particular part of the country um, but obviously they need that funded so they do that as a commercial service whereas so far all the feeds we've had from Open Referral UK are free and open albeit we don't yet have anyone providing an aggregation service such as I'm in provides for Open Active. Um, we have a dashboard with where, and this is a picture of it, but this is the live dashboard. So this was read um, 19 hours ago, and you see we read each of these is a live feed, so I can go and look at the feed directly and make a live query on the services. And you'll see that the data gets fed through here. And this is all live calls to the service data. And I can look at any one service and I can look at the JSON representation of that. All of that is fed through live from our dashboard. And this dashboard reads every feed that at one stage we have, we've passed through our validator to say it's strictly compliant with the standard and there are degrees of compliance which largely corresponds with which filter parameters it supports and you get a tick in the box depending on whether it complies with that or not but the, the first element of compliance is just that it's still up so it's not a one-off and off the page here we used to have IMIN's feed and I'm very grateful that IMIN provided a transformation of their data um, which I, I think you stopped uh, Nish giving us uh, an ongoing feed of that. So obviously over time that got out of date, but understandably you don't want people to take that for free and use it. So we always made it clear it was illustrative. But these days we've, um, we've replaced that with a feed from London Sport and um, we'll come on to, to talk about the London Sport feed um, but uh, London Sport now provides a feed transformed from its open sessions um, format. And indeed, we validate that every day and we show what it complies with. And we have lots of good data from there for which we're grateful. So that's that's where we stand at present. Um, we primarily have multiple local authorities that have looked at or implemented the standard and there's a cure a group of others that are looking at it at the moment um, and there's a DLUC project in place to look at how they can accelerate adoption and there's a group of suppliers which have adopted the standard and these two are new we'll come on to talk about London Sport also IDOTS, which describes itself as the biggest service directory provider in local government, has committed to adopting, it was telling me October, i.e. this month, it's now saying January next year, but they are fully committed to supporting it. So we're, we're moving in the direction of widespread adoption, but I think we, it's fair to say we have a far lower percentage of services in our field than Open Active has in sports and recreation. Is that okay, Andrew? Yeah, that, that's excellent. Thank you, Mike. Um, so I'm sure people will have questions for you, um, but I'm going to use the chair's prerogative. So the, the, the list of suppliers there is really interesting. Are they suppliers who are providing directory tools to local authorities to enable them to create these 
records or are they providing tools to let users search through the records and find opportunities uh, they are primarily people publishing so neon bright actually published for it's actually a charity called um it's a youth i can't remember the name a youth charity um in lambeth um tpx impact provides software they've actually got both they've got a publishing application called outpost and they've got a consuming application which does a, provides a front end called scout um placecube have got just a back end and they're looking at tpx impacts front front end which is a lovely example of interoperability between suppliers um tpx impact have got several councils publishing data uh, sorry placecube have got several councils publishing according to their standard tpx impact have got one but they've got five or six in the queue Public Partnerships is another organization that is publishing data, but they also have their own bespoke front end. A local gov Drupal has um, illustrated in open source Drupal code publishing a directory. Um, Digital co-production is working on a directory and working on an, an aggregator. AOP has a near compliant public API, but not quite. Etch has a an API that they developed for Southampton, so that's an open compliant API. Um, NPC is an organization that coordinates voluntary sectors looking at the standard. Well aware consumes it. Doc and T consumes it in a front end. Vida Via consumes it in a front end service finder application. And IDOX is in the process of publishing according to the standards. So it's probably about 67%, 70% publishers and the rest consumers of the data. We're concentrating on the publisher side on the grounds that once the data is open, the users will come rather than, um, and, and people are already talking about doing innovative things with the data, but we haven't yet got the weight of numbers for anyone to be able to develop an app that is you know, suitable, you know, for most regions of the country. Oh, thanks, Mike. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Mike on the kind of generality of open referral, the specification, etc.? Cool, thanks, Mike. Um, and I'm sure if people are watching this afterwards um, and they have questions, they can get in touch with you. Um, yeah your details are one of the on one of the slides and i can share those as well if people need them so that's fine thank you um I, th I think what we'll do next is we'll hand over to the team from london sport to talk about the work that mike's really nicely trailed there um so who's going to kick off for london sport uh, i'll be kicking off for london sport i'll be introducing a little bit about what we're doing and a contextual history about why we're doing what we're doing um and then i'll hand it over to my colleague stephen who will talk a little bit more about the technical aspect of things and so London, yeah, sure, absolutely, no worries. Um, London Sport in 2021 published a report uh, alongside a partner with some social prescribing platforms and local authorities, uh, having a look into social prescribing and some of the issues with a lack of physical activity data for social prescribers. Um, and from that research, it, it came about that link workers are, are struggling as a result of the lack of physical activity data. And a case study that, that we had run at the time showed the impact of having physical activity data in an open referral setting and how beneficial this could be for social prescribing softwares and for link workers and GPs generally. Um, that, uh, that report was done in 2021, so a couple of years ago. Um, and since since um, my manager Chris has started and myself, we've been trying to work on how we can be able to bring to light some of those challenges um, and address those and finding some kind of digital and tech solution to be able to do that. So in terms of what we have done so far is we are looking at being able to um, have in uh, be able to combine our open active data into an open referral compliant feed and to be able to then partner with the social prescribing platform to be able to pl publish that data. Our ambitions for now is to be able to run a hyperlocal pilot with a social prescribing platform, whereby our aggregated data of um, open referral and open active would be able to be published in a unified feed by these by these social prescribing platforms um, and to be delivered in a hyperlocal area and measure the impact. We will be hopefully attempting to do uh, a case study um, in order to in order to understand the impact in that hyperlocal 
um, pilot and to be able to then potentially scale that forward throughout throughout the rest of London across different local authorities and potentially throughout nationwide as well, depending, depending on how well it works. Our key outcomes that we're trying to focus on is to be able to um, address the social prescribing needs that, that are currently being focused on by the government, as well as preventative medicine. And we believe that obviously physical activity data would be a key component of being able to do that. Um, and so being able to combine open referral data and the, in the physical activity data together and have a social prescribing platform, being able to publish that data um, would, be, would be our ambition uh, in, in terms of what we're trying to do in, in the future. Um, so far, what we've done so far is that we've been able to convert all of uh, open active data to be open referral compliant. So that was a large piece of work that we were, we were able to, to complete. Um, and at the moment, we, we're also going to be working on um, attempting to, to find social prescribing platforms to be able to partner with. We're in the conversations with a few of them, um, and hopefully something positive should, should come to light soon in regards to that. Uh, I'll hand over to my colleague Stephen now, who will talk, talk a little bit more about the technical aspect of things. Stephen, take it away, please. <clears throat> Thanks for that, Zach. Um, I'll I'll try and keep it uh, quite light from from our perspective. So, um, for those that don't know, London Sport have a platform called uh, Open Sessions, which um, is about the ninth largest um, open active publishing platform. Uh, it is uh, free to use, and it is uh, purely a uh, open act, active activity publishing platform. It doesn't do uh, bookings or or any form of payments. Um, so what we've done is taken the data that we have in there and and convert it to an open referral feed that it, that is now published and available for for people to ingest. Um, there is some work ongoing on on that, um, as Mike can probably explain further in terms of how. Uh, session data is kind of stored in 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 the array. We're we're kind of publishing it a, a little bit too too large at the moment. Um, kind of every everything individually, but um, so there's some quirks around the data from like a, a series perspective. Um, but but es essentially that's that that's what we've carried out. We we did it in a way where we didn't want to add any further complexity to to open sessions. We've not added any fields, everything that we've done to comply with the open referral standard um, has is either a you know data that we had or it's been hard coded in, you know, for example, um open active doesn't have language data. So we just, you know, we make the assumption that um, they're all delivered in in English. Um which is which is something that we're looking at, you know, as a wider, a wider piece of work. Do we need to uh, add in more fields? Do we need to have a separate flow for open referrals? Uh, but yeah, essentially everything in, um, essentially everything on open sessions that's published to open active is now published to, uh, to, to open referrals. I don't know if anyone has any questions about that or if, if you'd like me to go into more detail. So I'd be interested in the kind of process you went through uh, uh, to, to, to achieve that that kind of outcome of, of the open active data being an open referral. Um, I'd be interested in how difficult it was, uh, what you did to kind of map the specifications, what sort of decisions you made in that process, that sort of stuff. Um, to be honest, it was relatively straightforward. Uh, so we, we went through the open referral data standard listed all of the fields and then started uh, correlating those against what what we had and i suppose it's important to remember we didn't we didn't convert an open active feed to an open referral feed we took data that we publish as open active and published it as open referral so we're not taking you know one feed and converting it to another and um, we're taking you know our, our database entities and just publishing them in in two separate uh, ways and formats. Um, so we essentially went through the process of listing out everything in open referrals, matching those up to fields that we have um, in our database in in Open Active, and then filling in the gaps. Like I say, you know, language was one that that came up. There's a 
a lot of information around um, centers. Um, you know, like if you think of it from an open referral standpoint, like drop-in centers, places that wouldn't necessarily have a have a session, doesn't align particularly well to open active data. Um, you know, the closest that you've got is going, well, this is a leisure center. Doesn't we don't store op opening times and things like that like you would for a, uh, for like a drop-in center. Um, so it's just just kind of working through that and finding workarounds what we could and could couldn't publish for that. Like I say, we we hard coded quite a lot of values, but uh, but a lot of it is fairly interchangeable. You know, if you think of, you know, if you take it down to its kind of base levels, what a um, session is, it's going to have a title, it's going to have a date, going to have a time, it's going to have, you know, a description. Um, you know, and that those are the main things that you need to be passing along. That's great, thank you. Um, and it's, it, it, I, I, I guess those hard coded values are probably where the lessons learned are because they're the things that are different between the two specifications, right? Yeah. Cool, okay. Um, so does anyone else have any questions for uh, Zach and Stephen and Chris around this? Hello, only one. Uh, okay. Which is, although I saw Mike's hand go up, we're doing hands, aren't we? So I might have jumped in You'll earlier. go first, Nick. <laughs> Mike oh. kind of knows all the answers <laughs> to refer all those, doesn't he? So I'm going to come to you first, Nick. <laughs> okay, I don't mind. I don't mind. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Andrew. Very kind. Um, it was only just to, and you were talking about putting it into a platform. Um, obviously, there's a few different platforms, open, social prescribing platforms that are using open active data as is and combining it with other stuff, I assume. Um, Nish would know more on that. Um, with with the platform that you're thinking of getting it, sorry, when I say platform, I mean user-facing interface that someone's going to use to search for something in London. Um, is there a particular platform in mind that kind of open sessions work that someone's kind of said, I, I'm kind of imagining a situation where a platform has said, um, we already use open referral data. We don't want to build an open active extra. We don't want to do the extra work to consume open active data as well. Can you give it to us in open referral format? That type of conversation. I just wondered what you know what what the background of that was. Um, I mean, I mean, it might be one that that Nish can comment on. If if I'm honest, as we if we've as we've looked into this and providers of those platforms, um, we, you know, there isn't there isn't somebody that stands out to us that has a um, particularly robust uh, solution to this. I'm not aware of any social prescribing platforms that are ingesting open active data. Um, I say Nish, Nish might have some comments on that from an IMIN perspective, but as far as I know, no one, no one is doing that. I can't, and that, so that's as in no one is taking an aggregated open active feed and uh, pushing it into a social prescribing platform. So if nobody's doing that, almost certainly nobody is going around the however many like hundred or so open active individual feeds, ingesting those, aggregating them, doing the work that Iman is doing to then push push them into a social prescribing platform. The the further issue is we're also not aware of anybody currently aggregating um all open referral feeds. I think um and I get you know Mike Mike can feel free to jump in on this. From the list of platforms that he showed on the, the final slide, most of those are kind of just a Kind of peer-to-peer -peer relationship if i take uh, place cube for example and it again this is my understanding of it is <clears throat> you can go go into a platform like that and you can publish your sessions and they will publish them to an open referral format and then whatever front-end tools that they provide search their data so the the open referral feed is kind of made as as an aside to it so if another platform wants to come along and ingest that data they can but for the most part, it's X council, you know, one department listing their sessions and another department reading those sessions. And we all benefit from that. That also being published as a open referral feed that somebody could come and ingest. But as I say, I'm not aware of any social prescribing platforms that are currently ingesting all open referral feeds or ingesting the aggregated, say, I'm in 
open active feed or then going a step further and aggregating all of those open active feeds and uh, you know kind of publishing absolutely everything i would just can i prompt nish on just to double check again okay, he's got the up-to-date understanding of who's using it um and, and joy i was i know that joy was looking at consuming data directly and i spoke to the ceo there a couple of weeks ago um, and he's he's been using the um the open active data directly at least not through i'm in i'm not sure about the open sure. referral side of things i don't i mean we we've had some calls with joy recently so joy are currently ingesting the open sessions open active feed and i think there's a little bit of confusion around um because we call it open sessions it's kind of confused as open active i mean it is open active data but it is not all open active data and from my discussions with i mean i understand us to be an open sessions and london's but the ninth largest publisher but it's orders of magnitude greater so if you go from us to say the first one um it's like everybody yeah, active yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of like 250 you know, yeah <laughs> ex exactly exactly so we're we're you know we're not we're not nothing but you know in comparison we're, we're quite a small percentage of it so anybody ingesting just our feed is you know it's, it's at a disservice to the you know the open active ecosystem that makes sense. I hadn't realized what that was. And just before I, I, I prompt this again on that, it's just that uh, there was, there's a thing to note, which I think just note technically from what we've just been speaking about. I think open referral is a smaller set of data in respect to, as I think as Mike said, it's less stuff, isn't it? You're not as detailed, you know, and overall, and there's a lot more stuff both in depth and in breadth in terms of open active, but obviously within the niche, as that diagram showed of, of sport and physical activity. So, um, 250 ledger centers worth of data in the detail is is something that would be not well obviously open referral wouldn't accept that data because it's not the, the level it's the, so that i think that's just probably speaks to the difference in where the standards have kind of come from in terms of open active is designed to scale quite high high volumes of data and data transfer and hence things like the feed-based approach um whereas i think open referrals it's it seems like smaller sets of data from local authorities rather than from source. So less maybe total feeds, whereas Open Active is kind of thinking hundreds of feeds across, you know, all these different systems across ranging from 250 ledger centers through to, as you say, very small. So there's, there's a, there's a slightly, there's slightly different ambitions in the, in the ecosystem structures that they are kind of talking about, which is interesting. Obviously the data itself is, you know, we want them both in finders. Um, but it's it's interesting that the the different shapes of ecosystem um, uh, are, is something to think about in this as we as we as we go. But I just wanted to poke, poke Nish on: is there no one else using open referral? Um, sorry, open active data in referral anymore? I don't know. There was some before doing that. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give a quick answer. As I know Mike's hands been up for a while. Um, uh, yeah. But, uh... It kind of depends on how you define social prescribing platform, <laughs> but that caveat out there. Um, but you've got um, uh, that work with us at least. Uh, Health Place uh, Elemental have an integration to to I'm in. Um, Joy has been mentioned already, uh, and then I think Helam as part of the London Sport funded project, whenever that was, a couple of years ago, eighteen months ago, also developed an open active uh integration um and they bash themselves as a social prescribing platform um I, i'd say the problem they have is that um physical activity is one of many interventions they want to promote uh to their their service providers and um i don't think their customers whoever that might be health service local authorities are really banging down the door for them to to progress like a full productionized open active integration um and i think that, that a lot of that's to do with the the misunderstanding of oh maybe not misunderstanding but the lack of clarity around open active and how it can fit into a world where volume isn't the answer but breadth and variety is with social prescribers and trust um which again i think was covered in the london sport pilot so uh, i'll stop there because that's maybe a little bit of a red herring 
avenue to go down. But there is use of open active within social prescribing platforms. I don't know how well it's actually being used on the ground. Technically, though, it's it's in place. Thanks, Nish. I'm going to come to Mike, who's been very patient. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, lot, lots to cover. And my original hand was about aggreg aggregators, which I think we've, you know, we need to to get to grips with. Just just a word on on depth and breadth of the two systems. I, I, I th undoubtedly, there's a lot more data in Open Active, um, and I think I think probably the biggest driver for open referral is social prescribing in its broadest sense, but not just health. You know, what local government link workers and whatever. And certainly physical activity comes within that, you know, things like chair yoga, but they're probably less interested in booking squash courts and whatever, because they see that that, that will fall within commercial sector or, or um, and is not necessarily the, the target audience. So we may even get to a point whereby if we're feeding from open active, we need to filter down that very high volume of data you've got to records that count. Um, my original question was going to be to Zach when he was talking about aggregating the two, because it makes sense if we're saying that open referral has a broader scope of services that we transform as London Sport has done from open active to open referral, and then we aggregate at the open referral level. Um, and we are right that there is not a commercial provider of that, albeit, as I said, you know, DF, that's what DFE wants to do, albeit within a subset of services that specifically support families. Um, and there is a lot of work, you know, digital gaps tell me that they're producing one of these. And um, there's work in the States that looks at it. And there is a certain art, as I'm sure I'm in will say, in terms of identifying like services and, and removing them. We do have the concept of a GWID for organizations. So you clearly you know, we do have unique identifiers from individual sources, but if you've got the same source service coming from multiple locations, you have to decide, you know, which one you use or worst case scenario, taking fields from one and fields from another. And there is, you know, we have the advantage that, you know, we're bu building on a US standard where some of that work's already gone on and there is more to, to go on. But I think there is a gap in a market and I mean, might be interested in that gap, given that you've got all this experience in doing it with uh, open active in, in bringing these these fields together. Though, as I say, you know, I and I would, wouldn't I, because I'm an open referral person, say we should be aggregating at the open referral level. Um, and um, I don't know if that's what Zach had in mind when he was suggesting it. So that's really interesting I, I get a sense that we could carry on talking about this for another hour and unfortunately we don't have another hour which is one of the reasons I want to bring a bit of focus to this over the next few months with the W3C and and I think there's a conversation we can carry on through the the W3C uh, Slack channel um Nish you've got your hand up and I noticed you've posted one other question into the chat are they the same question <laughs> no okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> Uh, let the London Sport guys respond to your question in the chat and let you ask the last question. Um, and I want to give Howard five minutes at the end for his item. Okay, so maybe this will be more of a, a, a point than a question and to hopefully shape the discussion. Um, I think so far we've talked a lot about technicalities of, of open referral and open active and probably right for this group. But obviously I think it's important we consider the, the state of play on the ground and the use cases that we're seeing. So I can share from our point of view, we'd love to, to, to hear from, from other people. Um, so a lot of the time we're engaging with local authorities, health service bodies of various shapes and sizes who want to uh, create the one-stop shop, always a one-stop shop, but for their, for their corner of the world, be that region, be that type of service, be that type of user. Um, and what I see happening a lot is local authorities thinking they have to choose between open active and open referral, which is probably slowing down adoption of both because everyone's like, whoa, 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 what's with this stuff? They're not a technical audience and they don't, they shouldn't have to be to understand the stuff. I think there's a translation thing we should all work on, but um, they're having to choose one or the other. And I don't think that's necessarily a choice they have to make. I think along along the lines of what Mike is saying, there's a world where we can bring it together in different ways, depending on what they wanna want to want to um, come out with. 
Um, but I, yeah, that for me is one of the biggest reasons I'm on this call, which is how can we focus on some of those use cases? Is it a communications thing in the first instance? But is it, is it, um, it sounds like we have examples from maybe London Sport, from maybe the work we did with Porism a couple of years ago on that converter that could show that actually you don't have to choose. Because the worst thing that could happen, in my opinion, is that service providers get a mixed message. They're being forced to use this thing for open referral and this thing for open active. And maybe I'm a sports club that just does physical activity. And why should I have to do both? Or maybe I'm a sport club that does a bit of physical activity and a bit of other. And where do I go with, with my information? So clarity of instruction to the service provider is critical because they are going to be the ones that make it work. And if we lose them and their engagement, then the whole thing collapses. Um, and so I have, a, I have a stance on what we should do there, but it'd be good to share, maybe not in the last, if we don't have enough time, but it'd be good to share use cases and requirements we're seeing on the ground with, in, in this group so we know perhaps where it's useful to start and where it's valuable to start. So thank you, Nish. That's a great trailer um, because this is the start of a journey, right? Um, so I had a chat with some some of our, my colleagues at ODI about the best way to uh, approach this. Uh, we talked about a kind of use case model, um, but we also talked about problem statements. And uh, the conclusion that we reached was actually, yes, use cases are really important, but you need to understand the problems that you want use cases to solve. So what I would like to do um, uh, over the next month before the next W3C meeting is to open up a document to enable people to contribute to the development of problem statements. And we've got a bit of time at ODI that we can use to facilitate this. Um, but fundamentally, I think there are two sets of problems that we want to try and capture. So the first set of problems is problems that making open active data into open referral data could solve. So they're the kind of the, 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 the problems that um, they're the benefits, right? They're the things that we're going to fix by doing this. Uh, and then the second set of problems is problems that making open active data into open referral data could cause. So that's things like duplication and some of the other things that we've touched on this afternoon. So what I will do after this session, I will I will create a Google Doc. I will put those those categories into it and I will open it up via the Slack channel for anyone to contribute to. And, you know, we we want to make this work. So please, please do contribute to that document. What we'll do is we'll get this group, the W3C group back together, and hopefully, you know, people will be able to get, see the buzz that we're trying to build around this, and we'll get a few more people who perhaps haven't been as involved um, to, to start looking at those problem statements and defining some requirements and talking about patterns at the next meeting. Uh, and then after that, we're going to produce, aim to produce some sort of recommendation or guidance uh, that we can give to the community. So when people want to take uh, their open active data and present it in a form ready for open referral that, that there was there is some guidance or some recommendations that they can follow um I, I, and that's the kind of process that we're planning to go through um it's a bit of a test we haven't worked in this way before uh with the people that we now have um so so we'll, we'll see how this ticks along over the next few months um so, so that's that's open referral and open active um I'm really aware that Howard had a very small bit of any other business, and I want to give him a bit of time to introduce that. So, Howard, can I hand over to you? Howard, you certainly can. Sorry, <laughs> the old the older button dancing. Um, where are we? So, I will. It, it is. There we go. Um, so, just a, a short update really on something we have discussed previously and this is the idea of the, the club finder capability um, which is a lot of feedback we get we talk to national government bodies and things they're not ready to take the step of publishing uh, time slots event session level data uh, in the open active format yet so they're not they don't perhaps have the digital maturity set up a rpd feed and and what have you so we're looking at um, ways that they can start that kind of open data journey. And, um, you know, clearly the, the existing data contains enough information to, to present that kind of club finder capability to show, um, let's say, um, a governing body has associated or affiliated clubs up and down the country 
Um, they have got the details of them, the contact details, the location. They can be presented and shared in a way that can um, that can start them on that road to sharing open data. So we have put together a proposal around how we might use the existing specifications to to enable that. Um, and this would you know kind of give organizations that don't have that digital maturity to go from a spreadsheet, for example, to presenting an open active a version of an open active compliant feed that presents their clubs um, alongside other open active data to be found and discovered in activity finders. So we've got a proposal that we're going to share around how we could do that. And the, the intention is not to discuss it really here in this call. It, it's you know just if we could work in an offline way. So I'll be sharing a document that's um, it will be open for comments and I will raise the irrelevant issue on the GitHub page for the data model. But obviously, um, that GitHub format isn't not everyone's comfortable in that. So we'll have the, the kind of Google Doc where people can put comments as well. Um, and I think that's that's all really I wanted to say at this stage, Andrew. So it's we've discussed it before. It is it is. Um, if Jules was on, he would be, you know, uh, championing this kind of approach to, to give people that uh, that capability. And uh, so I'll be sharing details of that shortly I'll, by email with the group, and I'll email the links to the Google Doc and the, the Slack, uh, the GitHub issue. Uh, that's great. Thank you, Howard. Um, Stephen. Uh, yeah, it was just to expand on on that, um, as um, yourselves might, might not be aware. Uh, London Sport have started some work um, in this area, not necessarily a club finder, but we're, we're basically treating it internally um, as like an open club standard and um, implement, uh, look, looking at what, what those fields, what that data standard would need to be. And then um augmenting open sessions to to allow for um organizations to just list as organizations which would then facilitate a like a club finder or a club finder feed to be published from from open sessions obviously we, we've got all the organization data that we have now and we're i mean we're not unique but we're fairly unique in the open active space that we we do have a hierarchy of users against organizations so it's a many-to-many -many relationship um you can belong to various organizations we're doing some work with uh, uk deaf sports at the moment where they're listing their organizations and sessions on behalf of other organizations but yeah in, in short essentially it's a it's an area that we're we're working in uh, we hope to define the fields quite soon um we can then implement any requirements into uh, open sessions so that people can just go in there and list themselves just as an organization. We're going to have a bulk upload tool for that. So when uh, NGBs, for example, have a spreadsheet of data, we can just help them push that in. They can then be admins of all of it whilst having further admins that are able to manage their, their own organizations in the future. Um, and then from that, at such point that a standard is defined, we'll be able to publish in the same way we publish an open active and an open referral feed, an open club feed That's for great. somebody to come along and in, ingest. That's great. Thank you, Stephen. And, and I think there's already a connection between the, the team here at ODI and you guys around this as well. So, yeah, I, th I think we, we will definitely be um, building on the knowledge that you're capturing at your, your end. So thank you. Um, that's been that's uh, it's three o'clock. So uh, uh, that's been a really interesting session. It's been a really good discussion. Uh, big thanks to Mike and the team at London Sport for coming and talking to us about the work that's going on with Open Referral and Open Active and Open Referral in London. Um, there are some actions coming out of the session which I will document over on the Slack channel, and we will see you all uh, for the next meeting, which will be on.